No matter how strong that unity of effort is, there is not a single security apparatus from any country that will get the risk to zero. In other words, our, we will always have vulnerabilities in this country. And I um, believe that's okay, right? I mean, in other words, if we could just get our head around, there is a certain amount of vulnerability and risk that we have in this country that we actually should accept, right? The, the borders and the flow of people and goods and ideas are things that we value as citizens. There are, just as an example, two million uh, people entering and exiting domestic airlines in the United States every single day. Just think of what that means in terms of security, but also think how amazing that is in terms of the kind of country that we live in. So just quickly, the, how I think about the vulnerabilities then in resiliency is, and how to measure government is, how effectively are we minimizing the risk? In other words, we're not, I mean, we shouldn't just throw our heads up, our hands up and say, oh, what will be will be. There are ways to measure our resiliency. How well do we minimize the risk? Secondly, how well do we maximize our defenses, right? In other words, the policies that the president was talking about. But third, and most importantly, and this will get to our resiliency discussion, how well and are we able to maintain our spirit as uh, a nation, as communities, as a city, and at the level that I write about in the book, even in our homes? How do we maintain our resiliency? That's the biggest challenge because we'll never get the vulnerability uh, to zero. I'll have recommendations about thinking about resiliency, not simply as a mood, right? Keep calm and carry on or Boston strong, but actually as investments we can make in our own um, uh, public safety apparatus.